Russia has resumed flight tests of a new civilian airliner, the IL-114-300 regional turboprop. We've done a few videos about this airplane before. Let's understand why the earliest possible introduction of this machine on the line is so important for our country. What were the difficulties in its creation and how they were eventually overcome? At the end of last month, it became known that the United Aircraft Corporation, abbreviated UAC, resumed the IL-114-300 flight test program, within the framework of which the second prototype aircraft made its first flight from the UAC Los Airfield, Varnon. The flight lasted 40 minutes and took place at altitudes of up to 900 meters and at speeds of up to 230 kilometers per hour. As Dmitry Yadrov, head of Rosaviatia, said, to quote, aircraft manufacturers still have a large amount of certification work to do on the IL-114-300, including flight tests. Modern regional airplanes of Russian production are extremely necessary for solving the tasks that the country's leadership has set before the air transport. This is an increase in the mobility of our citizens and a one and a half times increase in the intensity of air traffic in Russia by 2030. End of article. Indeed, a few years ago, the country's leadership set the task of creating its own regional passenger airplane. As President Vladimir Putin said, to quote, we know how difficult it is to deliver passengers in the Far East, Eastern Siberia, and within the regions. Often people have to fly to nearby neighboring regions via Moscow or St. Petersburg. This is totally unacceptable. In this sense, having our own regional airplane, especially with the capability to land and take off from unpaved strips, is of great importance to us. That's what he said back in 2016, and now that task is close to being realized. What is this regional jet? Today, intra-Russian air transportation is largely tied to flights of the kind of some city, Moscow, and Moscow, some city. In other words, for a flight, for example, from Perm to Nizhny Novgorod, you have to use the airports of the capital's air hub to transfer between two flights. And all because the direct flight from Perm to Nizhny Novgorod flies conditionally only twice a week, while flights via Moscow are daily and even several times a day. It is too expensive and unprofitable to fly between regions more often under current fleet and passenger traffic conditions. To solve this problem, we need a specialized regional aircraft that provides cheaper transportation and can carry a smaller number of passengers. It should be a small liner with a capacity of 20 to 110 passengers and capable of serving routes with a range of 500 to 1,500 kilometers. In the Soviet Union, the main regional airplane in the post-war period was the IL-14, and beginning in the 1960s, the N-24, which was produced until 1979. Until today, a large number of old ANTS are operated both in the countries of the former Soviet Union and in many countries in Asia and Africa. In the early 1980s, the N-24 turboprop aircraft pair began to become obsolete. Just at that time, the regional airplane segment began to be fascinated by a new type of engine, turbojet engines. In the Soviet Union, the N-24 began to compete with such airliners as the Yak-40 and Yak-42. It seemed that the future of local lines was only in turbojets. They provided greater airspeed and less noise. However, the price to pay for these advantages is worse fuel efficiency compared to turboprops. The heir to the Soviet turbojet regional airliners in Russia today is the superjet, which is being actively import substituted. In such a situation, the initiative of the Eilishan Design Bureau, put forward in the early 1980s, seemed outdated. There, the proposal for a new IL, 114 turboprop 60-seat passenger airplane for local airlines was made. However, turboprops have a crucial quality. They are more adapted for takeoff from unpaved, ice, and other poorly prepared runways. In addition, the turboprop is much less demanding of runway length, which is a significant advantage for a regional airplane focused on a network of local airfields, especially in a country with such large distances as Russia. The fate of the original IL-114 variant turned out to be sad. The prototype aircraft made its maiden flight in March 1990, but testing, finalization, and certification of the machine against the background of the collapse of the Soviet Union was extremely delayed. Due to lack of funds, the IAC airworthiness certificate for the IL-114 was obtained only in 1997. Another blow to the future of the IL-114 was the decision to produce it at the Tashkent Chkalov Aviation Production Association, abbreviated to Poish. With the collapse of the USSR, Topolichi found itself on the territory of independent Uzbekistan. By the early 2000s, it was lost as an aircraft factory, switching to small-scale production of household items for the public. As a result, the first variant of the IL-114, called the IL-114-100, was built only in a small series of 10 airframes, which by the mid-2010s were already chained to the ground. 
The IL-114 would have remained a utopian branch of aircraft construction if not for the changes in the regional airliner segment that took place in the mid-2000s. At this time, rising jet fuel prices led to a review of the approaches used. The classic 50-seat turbojet regional jet has become unprofitable. Its high cost per passenger seat and the inability to use cheap airfields without a long and high quality runway made turboprops attractive again. Against this background, the Ilishan Design Bureau decided to return to the finalization of the IL-114 taking into account the new realities. In 2014 to 2015, work began on the design of an updated IU-114-300 passenger airplane. It was decided to install two new TV, 7117 ST1 turboprop engines of 3,100 horsepower each on the airplane. In takeoff mode, these engines provided impressive power gains. The old IL-114-100 was fitted with TV, 7117 SMs, each producing only 2,620 horsepower. In takeoff mode and 2,000 horsepower. In cruising, the new TV-7-117 ST1S, on the other hand, have wider power adjustment limits from 3,600 horsepower in emergency mode to just 1,500 horsepower. In cruising flight, this reduces runway length requirements and fuel consumption. In addition, the engines were equipped with new AV-112-114 six-blade propellers, which significantly reduced cabin noise. Thus, the new IL-114-300 can take off and land on airfields where its competitor Sukhoi Superjet is simply unable to fly. The increased fuel efficiency of the turboprop airliner also makes it possible to reduce the price of tickets and the cost of cargo transportation. In December 2020, the first IL-114-300 prototype with a new TV, 7117ST, 01 engines took to the air for the first time. It was a copy, the fuselage and main systems of which were created back in the 90s in Tashkent. In parallel, one more machine of this modification was produced, but completely at domestic facilities. Today, various components of the aircraft are manufactured in Voronezh, Ulyanovsk, Nizhny Novgorod, and a number of other regions of the country. However, testing of the new machine was halted in 2021 after another IL-112B military transport plane crashed. Both of these airplanes shared virtually the same powertrain. As stated in the official message of the manufacturer, to quote, it is necessary to analyze the details and circumstances of the incident with IL-112B, including the analysis of objective data from the flight recorder. Therefore, test flights of the IL-114 prototype airplane equipped with a similar propulsion system will not be conducted for some time. And now flight testing has resumed. The new IL-114-300, built entirely in Russia, took to the air. In addition, it actually coincided with another not-so-noticed event. To me, 38 helicopters of Kalima Aviation Company were handed over to the customer and went to their place of work in Magadan. But the Mi-38 is equipped with virtually the same engine, only helicopter modification TV. 7-117B. Since then, the developers and manufacturers of the engine, Klimov Company, have carried out an impressive amount of design and testing work. As Klimov's general designer of Sevalot Elisiv was quoted as saying in the middle of last year, in 2024, starting from the first quarter, we plan to deliver at least six more engines already in serial form to support the IL-114300 program. End quote. The finalized design passed bench tests of 1800 cycles, and the Russian Aviation Register issued a type certificate to the TV-7-117ST-01 engine in January last year. Both flight tests of the IL-114-300 and sending of the Mi-38 to the customer mean one thing. The main parameters of the TV-7-117ST-1 engine have been brought to the working condition. With the first flight on the upgraded engines, the IL-114-300 enters the stage of decisive tests. At least, this year and next year will be spent to thoroughly and on all modes to conduct the modernized TV, 7117ST-01, and make sure of its complete reliability. As previously stated by the Ministry of Industry and Trade, serial deliveries of the IL-114-300 to airlines should begin in 2026. A total of 70 of these vehicles are scheduled to be produced by the 30th. Russian regions will finally receive a reliable, inexpensive, and unpretentious passenger airliner of fully domestic production. Well. Another failed legend of Russian aviation will be revived only under the brand, Oris. Designed in the late 90s to 324, in the development of which invested a lot of money, will finally get a second life in the form of a modern business jet. The airplane will be the base for the Oris airline, yes, the same luxury car maker. And the project will be developed not by Tupolev, but by Gazprom. 
In general, it has recently become known about the return of another promising aviation legend, which was to shine on the horizon of Russian aircraft construction in the early noughties. But due to funding issues, the whole thing was shut down and abandoned. However, as you can see, not all the way through. It's all about the airplane's unusual engines. In the 90s, there were high hopes for the Tu-324. The aircraft cost $100 million to design and was expected to replace the Yak-40 and Tu-134. Developers were preparing several modifications of range up to 7,000 kilometers and passenger capacity up to 72 people. One of the versions was an administrative airplane, and it is on its base that they now want to make a business jet. The airplane's control system was entirely domestic and allowed a two-man crew to operate the craft. This was a breakthrough for Russian aviation at that time. But in 2003, the airplane lost the tender, and for a while, everyone forgot about it. But now all of a sudden, it's brought up again. The project will be revived under the auspices of Oris and with the active participation of Gazprom, which, as reported, may buy up to 40% of the carmaker's shares. According to Business Online, the new airplane will be handled by a team that worked on the Russian-Chinese CR-929. Why did the choice of Oru fall on the Tu-324? Here we need to go back to the engines, and more specifically the atypical arrangement. The engines were placed in the tail section of the fuselage on pylons, so there is less noise in the cabin and acoustic comfort is very important. And in fact, this is exactly the kind of aircraft that a growing, young, and promising company is sorely lacking to transport its wealthy contingent, especially if they are swinging into the global market. All the more so now is the right time, because European manufacturers who produced airplanes of this class are slowly suffocating. Some, of course, will say, yeah, that's only for the rich. Yes, maybe not everyone will be able to fly it, but this production gives jobs to many people and adds to our coffers. And there is also a lot of demand for such airplanes.